So you're thinking about moving to Bellingham, Washington, or more specifically, Everson, Washington. Well, in this video, I'm gonna take you inside the computer using Google Maps, show you all around Everson, Washington to see if it might be a good fit for you. So let's get after it right now. This is your first time at the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about eating, sleeping, playing, and working as well as the good and bad about living in Bellingham, Washington and more specifically Everson, Washington. Then subscribe below and tap the bell icon for notifications so you can be the first to know about the current market in Bellingham and Everson, Washington. My name is Dale Serbisek and I'm with the Living in Bellingham, Washington team and every day we get calls, texts, and emails from people just like you and we love it. So whether you're thinking of moving in 9 days or 90 days, Give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email. We'll be happy to help you make that smooth move to the Bellingham or Everson, Washington area. So here we are in Google Maps, and right here is Everson, Washington, and right down here is Bellingham, Washington. And to travel from Bellingham to Everson, you're looking at about 29 minutes. You're going to be coming down here, State Route 544, and then across on 542 Mount Baker Highway to come into Bellingham. And to travel from Everson to Seattle, you're looking at coming down Highway 9, you cut across into Bellingham on 542, take the rest of the way on I-5. You're looking at approximately two hours, just over two hours this time of day. And to get to Vancouver, British Columbia, on a normal day, you're probably gonna wanna come across to the Custer area and then take I-5 cross at Blaine, up 99 into Vancouver. And on a busier day, or if it's a busier time, it's gonna send you up nine across Sumas, and you're gonna cut across on Canada One to get to Vancouver in approximately an hour and a half, depending on the border weights. And as I've mentioned before, if you are gonna be crossing over into Vancouver often, I would highly recommend getting a Nexus card. It only costs $50, lasts you five years, and allows you to go into Nexus designated lanes, which are significantly shorter than the typical lines at the border. So I'd encourage you to do that. Also, the wait from application to receiving your Nexus card right now, I believe, is almost a one-year wait. So if you think you're going to need that anytime soon, I would encourage you to apply for it now. And the population in Everson, Washington, as of the 2021 census, is almost 3,000 people. And you can see over the last 10 years, the population of Everson, Washington, actually this is since 1990. Back in 1990, it was about 1,500 people. And you can see it's definitely had a steady increase in population. So Everson's a nice little town. It does have a lot of amenities, even though most people don't work there. So I can definitely see the reason why that would be going up. Some of the smaller towns, such as Deming, have seen a drop in population, but Everson has been climbing shortly over time. And taking a closer look at some of the fun activities to do in the Everson, Washington area, you've got Hogan's Raspberry Farm, which is a farm where you pick berries, strawberries and raspberries, and you weigh them. So it's a nice place to go with the kids. Let's see if we have some nice pictures here. The Whatcom County area is known for having just the right soil conditions and weather for growing raspberries and blueberries. As a matter of fact, Whatcom County is probably considered the raspberry and blueberry capital of the world. There's a company called Corvan, I believe, which makes a harvester that's specific to harvesting raspberries and blueberries. A lot of them are still hand-picked as well. There's a lot of strawberries in the area, so I'd highly encourage you to come check out Hogan's if you want a fun day with the kids or a nice date to go and pick strawberries, raspberries, blueberries on your own. And if you're into golfing, we have Ra Raspberry Ridge Golf Course. It's a fitting name. Nice little golf course. It is considered one of the driest golf courses in Whatcom County. So this one stays open year round and it's one of those golf courses. It's not necessarily fantastic, but it's a full 18 holes. It's got nice views of Mount Baker. And again, the benefits is that it stays nice and dry in the winter. So if you like to stay golfing into November, December, January, February without being in too many mud puddles and such, Raspberry Ridge is definitely a good place to go. And we also have Samson's Estate Winery, which it's another winery. I mentioned the Mount Baker Winery off of Highway 542 in this general area here, which is the Mount Baker Winery. There's another good one up here, Samson Estates. They offer a little bit more selection of wines. They have a little bit more facilities. They're open year round, so you can see they've got some good labels. They have nice outdoor seating areas and ability to host weddings and receptions. They've won some awards. They have some great dessert wines as well. So. Definitely check out Samson's Estate Winery. There is also Cloud Mountain Farm Center, and this is their main farm area. 
They have some annual events as well here. They do a lot of apples and berries. And again, they have a lot of celebrations and festivities for kids and family throughout the year. Very, very nice facility. They got a lot of stuff for sale. You can walk around. You can also see some of their sustainable farming me uh, methods that they use. They do a lot of educational programs for kids in schools. And it's just a, a great way to spend a weekend in the, in the nice summer months. Another really fun area I'd suggest you check out is the Gold Mine Trail. What makes this unique, it's a, a trail you can hike and see some ruins at the end of a gold mine establishment that was built in the early 1900s, between I believe 1901 and 1905. And they got quite a few investors from around the country to invest in this particular gold mine. And they had it set up to look very elaborate. They had a hotel rooms and restaurants, saloon and other things like that. They actually had different vaults and areas where they were digging for gold. And they, the thought is that the rumor has it they intentionally planted gold in there to substantiate their claims. And when the, uh, the rumor kind of got out that it was, it was fake, um, the investors skipped town and that was the end of it. So uh, it's a really neat little area. They've re rebuilt some of the buildings and such now so you can actually see a cabin up there and what it looked like. There's a couple pictures uh, that I can try and find online and put up on the screen as well. And zooming in a bit closer here on Main Street in Everson, I'm gonna take a closer look at some of the restaurants in the area. You got Smokestack Diner, which offers great burgers, French fries, different types of, uh, you know, your typical pub fare. You can see here they got good pies and desserts, breakfast, teas, coffees, different beers, wines as well. And we got Herb Neiman's Steakhouse, which is one of those great steakhouses that still has not been renovated probably in the 40 or 50 years they've been open. Looks definitely like you're in Germany. They have great appetizers, nice steaks, great schnitzel, wonderful bar area. A lot of people hang out here at happy hour, good times. And moving right along, we have the Bourbon Bar and Grill right here. It's a great place to come watch live music, great atmosphere, a wonderful outdoor seating area. It's heated as well, so it's a good place to hang out year round. They've got good selection of food, salads, even seafood. So you got clams there, burgers, typical stuff you'd see, baked potatoes, prime rib. All those are interesting. Got pickles with bacon wrapped around them. We've got some more familiar things that you might notice here. We got Subway, got Little Caesars right here. Valley Tap House is a great little place to come hang out. They've got a lot of board games. You can order some beers or ciders and hang out. Got some coffee here at Master Blend, as well as Cafe 522 is right here. Another great place for coffee. Everson Market is a full service grocery store so you're not having to run into Bellingham every time you need something. And then over here actually is another great spot, this Klein Kombucha. If you've heard of kombucha, they make great kombucha. It's a good place to try out some of their varieties as well. And zooming in a bit closer, we have Holly's Meat Pies, which is a very good pie place. They have both savory and sweet. You can all get, also get them packaged up so that you can take them home. Put them in the freezer as well. Uh, definitely a great place to check out if you're into that. And moving on to parks in the Everson area. Well, right in close to Everson, we have Everson City Park, which is a nice little park. They've got a great picnic area, nice grassy area for the dogs and such. And there's also some playground areas with basketball courts. Then we also have Riverside Park, which is along the Nooksack. Again, a great place to have picnics, take your dog, you can go fishing and see here some of the sunset pictures. People take their dogs out and run them around. Good times there. And let's go back to City Park and show you some pictures of City Park. Again, a lot of activities go on. They have summer festival here every year in July. We're gonna get into that in a little bit more as we get further into this video. You can see there's the basketball courts, tennis courts. So it's a pretty nice area. And moving on to the schools. So Everson is part of the Nooksack Valley School District. They share schools with Nooksack and Sumas. You can see there's Nooksack Valley High School, which services all three of those towns, services Sumas, Nooksack, and Everson, as well as the middle school right here. The middle school is in Everson, right on Main Street. The high school is between Everson and Sumas. And then Everson Elementary School right here and then Nooksack Elementary right here, and Sumas Elementary. Now, obviously these are part of the other towns. And to show you where those are, here you see is the town of Everson. And you see here is Nooksack Valley High School, which if you have kids and you live in Everson, they would go to that high school. Then there is Nooksack Valley Middle School. So again, kids in Everson are gonna go to Nooksack Valley Middle School. Kids are also from the Sumas area and the Nooksack area are gonna be using these 
two schools as well, the high school and the middle school. Of course, in Everson, you got Everson Elementary School is gonna service kids living in Everson. Nooksack is a town that's basically right next to Everson. And it's really thought of as one general town. There was even talk a few years about incorporating them into one city and calling it Nooksack Valley, but that was shot down by the residents of Nooksack. So they are still two separate towns. And this map is kind of hard to read, but it shows you a general area. You see you got Everson, downtown Everson right here. You have the middle school right here. So you can basically see that this whole area of Nooksack, Sumas, Everson area is going to be served between the high schools and the middle schools. And then each individual elementary school, so you can see right here, is going to be for Everson Elementary. And some of the fun summer annual activities in the Everson area, as I mentioned early already, in City Park, they have a lot of the festivities for Everson Summer Festival. You can see this is Main Street, Everson during the parade. It's a great time to come and have a lot of fun with family and friends. It's gonna be your typical summer type of celebration with a lot of great food, activities, people selling stuff, great food trucks, a lot of games, activities, and some of these restaurants will have special treats for the kids, just an all around good time in the summer. And that usually takes place in July. Then at the harvest time, there's Stony Ridge Farm. That's a great place to come and spend time for looking for a pumpkin, get to listen to live music, a lot of great food. They have wonderful cider, hot and cold cider, as well as some amazing donuts, des designer donuts that are very good. And you can see here some of the pictures of the activities that take place during that harvest time. I feature a lot of this festival in my Everson vlog tour, which I'll put a link to that at the end of this video as well. So you can see me walking around I have my daughter and we're out enjoying the celebration at the Harvest Festival. So very good time. You can also go and pick your own apples. Again, those donuts are amazing. I'm trying to remember the different types of donuts that they have. I believe one of them is a pumpkin donut, which is very good. Uh, and then they also have a cider donut, which is very good as well. They're quite amazing. And now moving along to the real estate side of things, we're going to do a quick summary of real estate in the Everson area. This particular graph here is part of our MLS and it shows the percentage above list price that properties are selling for. Back to 2019, you can see this 100% line means that a property is selling for approximately on average 100% of its list value. If it dips below this line, theoretically it would mean it's more of a buyer's market because buyers are able to get properties for under list price. And then you can see basically when we came across the, the big C word as we call it. I don't wanna mess with the algorithms with YouTube. But uh, in 2000, things were pretty steady. And then in 2001, of course, we saw it become a stronger and stronger seller's market, which means sellers were getting offers above list price, multiple offers, bidding wars. And then of course, this spring and summer, we saw that suddenly change with interest rates doubling, going from the threes up over to seven. And you can see we're kind of leveling off a bit here with the holidays. And moving on to homes that are currently for sale. In the Everson area, you can see these little green dots. There's currently 11 homes for sale in the Everson area. And of course, that's gonna be the Everson mailing address area. So you can see it's gonna encompass properties out in the county as well. And of those properties, there's gonna be a range in price from the lowest being $349,000, the most expensive, being almost three million or two and a half million. Of course, that's gonna be on some big acreage, probably 4,300 square foot house. I'm sure it's a pretty nice one. You can see there. And uh, going back to the least expensive one, let's see what that one looks like. It's on Main Street. Still a nice, nice looking little house there, a little bit older, probably needs some elbow grease. And moving on to homes that have sold in the last six months in the Everson area. There's been 54. As we switch to the map area, you can see there's still quite a bit of sales in the area for property in Everson, which means it's still definitely a strong market if you're thinking of selling. Sellers definitely put your house on the market and there's gonna be plenty of buyers, but we are seeing stuff stay on the market longer. And looking again at the range, we're seeing sales anywhere from $320,000 all the way up to the low to mid millions there. And taking a closer look at the median sale price over the last three or four years in the Everson area back in July or January of 2019, median sale price was 336. We've seen a steady climb and of course a big climb in the last couple of years to our present median sale price of $528,500.
And moving along to months of inventory or otherwise known as absorption rate back in 2019, in Everson, we saw absorption rates, months of inventory at about three months of inventory. As this graph goes up, it means it's becoming more of a buyer's market. Six to seven months of inventory is considered a balanced market, meaning neither a buyer's market or a seller's market. And then of course, in the beginning of 2020, we see this number start to plummet, which means it's becoming more and more of a seller's market, less inventory, less homes for sale, more buyers making multiple offers going above list price until of course, right around the spring of this year when we see interest rates double, which again turns it more and more into a buyer's market. It still is a seller's market because we're under that six to seven month threshold. And in a nutshell, what months of inventory or absorption rate, how it's calculated or the way to describe it is if beginning today, no more houses were to go on the market based on the last six months of selling activity, how long would it take to deplete the current list of inventory? before it would go to zero without anything new coming on the market. Um, so basically that would mean if no more listings were to go on the market today, the current market or the current number of listings on the market based on buying activity, we would be completely out of listings in 3.2 months. I wanna thank you for sticking around to the end of this Everson Washington map tour here in Google Maps. And for doing so, I'm gonna share with you a few fun facts. The first one is how the town got its name. Now, a gentleman immigrated from Norway, and in 1871, he set up the first established homestead in the area of Everson, Washington. And ironically, his name was Ever Everson. No joke. He went on to be a prominent citizen of the Everson area. And the second prominent person to come out of Everson, Washington is a guy that goes by the name of George Bernard Worrell Jr. And you might know him as the founding member and keyboardist of the funky group back in the 1960s called Parliament Funkadelics. He went on to become a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame member. It's hard to imagine that a guy this funky, artistic, and musically talented would have come out of a sleepy logging town like Everson, Washington, but he did indeed. So once again, thank you for sticking around to the end. If you are thinking about moving to the Everson, Washington area or anywhere in Whatcom County, be sure to look me up, give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. I'd be happy to help you make that smooth move to the area. And until next time, I hope to see you around town.